Let's go. Yo, what's happening? Uh, let's just jump right into this redfish tactics. Beach redfish, it is my favorite thing to do. Um, these redfish are constantly on the move where I'm at, east and west, west to east, you know, all that stuff too. I find them a little bit more, how do I say, accessible to fly fishing and artificial baits. Because these redfish are constantly on the move, they're constantly burning calories and they're constantly trying to find something to eat. Unlike redfish on the bridge or, or uh, the bay or on some docks, right? Wait for some bait to kind of come by and they swoop in and they grab it, right? <clears throat> Not so much, I would say, with the redfish on the beach and here's why. Bridges, docks, all that stuff, they provide structure and protection for redfish to go hide under and get away from predators. Well, on the beach, there is no structure and there is no protection for these fish to get away from predators, you know, outside of swimming to the deep end and even that is still a long swim in itself. So they kind of tend to hug closer to the shoreline because most, most predators can't get to that. You know what I'm saying? Big sharks, uh, some dolphins, so on and so forth, right? Another reason why they are on the move so much, unlike let's say fish in a river or once again redfish on a dock or on the bridges or some jetties, those redfish have a tidal swing, an incoming and outcoming tide, right? So with that, it pushes bait past them, they face into the tide and they're just kind of waiting there. Well, on a beach and, in, and with a river, you know, obviously a river's, uh, fish in the river is facing into the stream and waiting for stuff to be swept down to them. You, you know what I'm saying, right? <clears throat> well, the beach doesn't necessarily have that. It does have like a current movement and an undertow, but it doesn't necessarily have current that pushes them into a position to face to where there's bait sweeping by, right? And like redfish in a bay uh, or on some shallow flats, during an incoming tide, these redfish tend to push very, very close. And I mean, right where the water meets the beach. And even that trough right there is still a foot, foot and a half deep, right? But they still tend to only come into that area on an incoming tide just because it's safer for, you know, there's water pushing in and on an outgoing tide, that water takes them back out. But when it takes them back out, it's only about, I, I, typically I see all the redfish 20 to 50 yards off the beach. And, and 50 yards is a stretch to be honest, you know? So fly fishing for these redfish is, is uh, one of my favorite things to do. When you're doing this on the beach, you have to understand that there is always kind of an undertow of water movement. So I tend to like to use a 10 weight and I tend to like to use a fly that has like a all right, medium dumbbell eyes or heavy dumbbell eyes, right? Because typically with the undertow and um, I don't even know if you want to call it an undertow, but call it an undercurrent or, or call it the waves moving. Uh, you need something that is going to, when it hits the water, drop down pretty fast um, and not be carried away too much by the undercurrent. Uh, and that can be a real problem because you think your fly is in a position that it's really not, right? So 10 weight for the reason that some of these fish are really big and I am throwing not necessarily heavier, uh, well, I am throwing heavier flies, but not necessarily bigger flies. They still got a very, very low profile in the water. I like to use lower profile baits that don't have too much on them. And as you can see in this one, this one's kind of like a blue crabish color. Uh, it definitely fits what these fish are eating for the most part, crabs and sand fleas, shrimp, whatever they can get their hands on in that trough, right? Oh, we got it, we got one, folks. We got one. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, let's go. Yes. 
put in work, now you just want to ball. Oh, yeah. Got Louis bags with no money. Yeah. Let's go. Hell yeah. Fast route. For me, it's always been a cash route. I'm going to let you go. Spend some money, switch a piece of cash out. Always been a stand up guy. Never back down. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Hell yeah. From my late to a late on the run, like I don't got an estate. Yeah. I'm from a late to the eight. Why not though? I know I'm gonna go, I'm gonna run girl For the money, I'm a bottles I know I'm not from LA, I'm from New York Upstate though, we got dope And we don't show no mercy, run the score It's on my head, so we got balls Went from MIA to LA on the run like I don't got an estate The 10 weight rod I'm using is, is by Moonshine Rods. It's the Outcast. It's a really dope rod. So when casting to these redfish, because they're always on the move, I like to put the fly about, I don't know, anywhere between eight and 10 feet in front of them. 10 feet ahead of them, two or three feet. I don't even know, let's say catty corner. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? In front of them, ahead of them, something like that, right? 10, two to three, all right? Why that is, is because now I have ample time for that redfish to cross paths, right? So this right here is all essentially a feel. When you feel like that redfish is in like two to three feet, I like to say, I'm sorry. When you feel like that redfish is in like one, one and a half feet of your line, of your fly, I like to give it a good one tug and from there it's just little like pops and twerks, you know what I'm saying? To get his attention and see if he eats the fly. Because you gotta think like, if you don't, if you lead him at three feet, right, and he's moving, by the time it sinks even halfway, it's right over the head, right? And by the time it's all the way, it's probably hitting the fish in the back and you're well, well beyond, the fish is well beyond gone and now you're struggling to get it in fast and recast. So uh, when fly fishing, you know, just really, really take a, a great lead on the fish. It gives you a great presentation. And uh, I promise you guys, you're, you're gonna increase your chances of catching one of these beautiful red fish on the beach Yo, so that really about does it for this redfish tactics I really hope you guys got something out of this yo if you guys are interested in any of these flies I tie them on my own you can check them out at gear at lta.com um, Yo get you some that one we use I call the Jizzy Drake because uh, It's a mix in colors and it's got sensitive appeal to it if you dig what I'm saying Yo, Drake makes music for the ladies, right? Yo, this one caught a big bull red. <laughs> well, I mean, it was, it was kind of big. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I always, <laughs> as always, guys, I appreciate the love. I really hope you guys got out something out of this. Uh, get out there. Spring is here. Go catch some redfish. Go walk the beach. Get a little bit of exercise and do what you love at the same time. I love the fish and I love to work out, so I combine the two. Um, and as always, yo, do me a couple of saws, yo. If you got something out of this, yo, consider hitting the like button, consider sharing this playlist with a friend. It really helps me out. Um, and I'm definitely trying to grow this channel and take it to wherever I can take it. Above all, if you didn't get anything out of that or this video, get something out of this. Yo, stay solid to yourself, stay 100 in your heart, and I promise you, everything will be all right. Yeah, dig.
I'm not really a fan of sour apple, but this sour apple flavor, yo, whew. I gotta start doing this, man. I'll be twisted. <laughs> Let's go. Hey.